Okay, fresh off that She Believes Cup victory for the USWNT, now we've got the Olympics looming this summer, taking place in Paris. It'll be here before we know it. We are going to embark on a 16-player draft, and we're going to work together in true ITC fashion to build the ultimate Olympics USWNT roster. We're not going to quite go snake draft. We're just going to alternate picks. Going to have to make some tough cuts. I'm excited to see who you've got. And then when it's all said and done, we will walk away with the official ITC Olympic roster, as mentioned. So first pick, I'm going with who I believe is the best player on this U.S. Women's National Team, and that is defender Naomi Gurma, 23 years old, played in the World Cup, was probably our best player in the World Cup as well. Mm -hmm. Kind of super vital, <laughs> like when we think about <laughs> who we might have to face uh, in yeah. those Olympics. So I think she's a lock to pretty much play every minute that she's available. So that's my first pick. She's off the board, Naomi Gurma. Okay, good. I got my big board over here. Got people crossed off. I had her ranked uh, number two, so that makes sense. Um, I think you'll probably guess who I have ranked number one. I think I would actually, I'd probably agree for you pound for pound. Maybe Gurma is the best player. Let me just get it over with. I'm taking Lindsay Horan, obviously. Mm. You, you mark her in, in Sharpie. She has to be on the roster. She has to be your starting center mid, no doubt. I like it. Yeah, I actually didn't have her second. Mm. So I'm glad we're going to have some a uh, little bit of dissension here. We'll see who I had two on my big board just because I feel like she's played herself into absolute lock status. She's young, but she's a killer. Yeah, I think we've seen that pretty much every match that she's made an appearance in. And that's Jaden Shaw. She's got to be on the roster. Just no way around it. Totally agree. She was number three on my list. So we're not far off. I like it. Yeah. And I mean, we talked about it in the She Believes Cup uh, recap. You could hear, and uh, again, Julie Foudy pointed it out, you could hear Twyla Kilgore basically yelling for one of them to get upfield and one of them to drop back and like kind of doing the yo-yo action between the both of them. That look of them almost like rotating between being a number 10 and a number eight and kind of taking turns depending on what the look is. I love that. I love that kind of stuff. You see Pep Guardiola do that kind of stuff on the men's side. Mm -hmm. I think that's what you want. I think that's a European style of football that has not typically been played in the States or in the U.S. national team many times before. And please, anybody with more historical knowledge, let me know if I got that wrong on old U.S. WNTs. But Shaw, Haran, in pen, easy peasy. Love it. Yeah. Some people say Rodri is the Lindsey Haran of uh, the men's game. <laughs> nice. So, okay. We got two midfielders. I mean, Shaw's like an attacking midfielder. You could play her on the wing if you want. Uh, but we got, I'm going to call Shaw an attacking midfielder, Haran a midfielder, Gurma a defender. Let me get a true forward, a true wing, one Trinity Rain Rodman. Got to play. No doubt about it. Hmm. I like it. She obviously gets the assist against Canada mm -hmm. and looked just super dangerous. I think, you know, you kind of forget that she's still so young, 21 years old. Yep. According to the USA Soccer website, I think she's either at 35 or 36 caps in her career. Awesome. At 21 years old, is just kind of mind bending. Yep. She's definitely a lock on my roster. And I'm going to stay on the offensive side of the ball. Another forward, just because I think she's been super dynamic as well. Super productive, creating chances for herself and others, and also playing out of her mind. And we can only project that she's going to be even in better form as we get to July. And that's Mallory Swanson. That's what I'm talking about, buddy. We are fucking locked in. She is right after Rodman on my list. My one, two, three, four, five. Top five on the big board, off the board. Mm -hmm. We're putting together a hell of a roster here. I love it. All right. Let's take, or wait, can we take a moment here? To think about the makeup of our roster. Is now uh, an acceptable time for us to kind of do that? Yeah, let's see where we are. Okay, so let's talk about the formation first because we, we got to put together a starting lineup here. Are you a 4-3-3 kind of guy? Are you a 4-4-2 kind of guy? Are you a 4-2-3-1 kind of guy? What do we think? I kind of like the 4-2-3-1 just because we talked about those two. You yes. Know? Like you throw... I'm not, I don't want to spoil it, but if you go back <laughs> and listen to our mm -hmm. She Believes segment, you'll know which two we're talking about. But put me down as a 4 2 three, one. But ultimately, you're going to have the 10th pick, which means you're ultimately going to decide with that 10th pick who gets that starting spot. So I'm glad we're kind of like zooming out a little bit, figuring out who we've got, figuring out what spots we've got covered. Okay. 
I love that. You teed me up fucking perfectly. Tee it up because it's Masters Week, buddy. In the defensive midfield, give us Sam Coffey. Let's go. <laughs> She's playing fucking great, buddy. She is a beast. She is so yeah. tough. It kind of reminds me, one of the best nicknames that I've seen on Basketball Reference for an NBA player, Herb Jones. One of his nicknames is <laughs> Not on Herb. <laughs> I think we can we can bless uh, Sam Coffee with not on Sam just kind of when she's in the zone playing out of her mind. I think she's an absolute must on the roster as well. That leads me to thinking a little bit defensively here. I think this player also is just crushing it, you know. And obviously she's getting those reps in North London Mm -hmm. at Arsenal. (laughs) Give me Emily Fox as my right back. She also is just. I mean, crushed her penalty kick, and I just love the way she's playing. It's just like no worries when, yes. when the action's on her side, basically playing a Darrell Rivas ball out there on her side of the field. Give me Emily Fox. Easy money. That's what I'm talking about. I took a drink there. Dino selects an Arsenal player. Who could have seen that coming? But no bias detected because you're 100% right. She's the player you want out there at right back, can help you on offense as well as just a lockdown defender. I think – I don't know if you're uh... – I'm I'm very interested to hear your thoughts on this. As a roster building partner, I hope you're not annoyed with me for this. I'm going to take a third forward because I think it's her time. I'm going to select Kat Macario because I think she is. I think she is ready to fucking go. And by the time the Olympics roll around, I think she's going to be in top form. Wow. Well, I think that's our head of the snake there. Kat Macario. Mm-hmm. So we've got our, our we've got our one in our four two three one. So I'm happy with the way the formation's shaken out. So I'll just kind of pencil her in here. I like it. I had her a little lower. Sure. But I mean three of the attacking players that we've already locked in. Trinity Rodman, Kat Macario, Mallory Swanson. What on earth do you do? <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> just chase those three around and we've sure. still got one more spot uh, to cover. And that's not even to mention Lindsay Horan, Jaden Shaw, who are absolutely going to be creeping up into that mix. I got to say, man, we're we're building a hell of a roster here. Two more picks before we kind of like uh, flesh out the the last of our starters. I'm going to stay on the defensive side as well. Give me Jenna Neiswanger. I think she's been pretty dynamic. I like the way that the U.S. has been using her up the field, playing back. I heard some chatter about kind of questioning, you know, maybe her positioning on the, with the Japan goal. I thought that was so silly. Like, this is clearly how we've set up our players. It's not her, you know, it's not her fault. She's supposed to be up the field trying to win balls uh, right around the halfway line. So I don't know. I think she's been rock solid and she's exciting. She's unpredictable. Great ball skills. She scored in the Gold Cup and she can just cover so much ground on the field. I'm kind of happy to have her on our side here. Love it. So I think it was it was a couple episodes on their podcast, the women's game. The legend, USWNT legend, Sam Mewis, talking about the importance of when you have a small roster. Oh, wait. Oh, pardon me. Manchester City football club legend, the Sam Mewis. Don't, mm-hmm. don't ever get that twisted. But she mentioned the importance of flexibility and versatility. So I think here there are two players that we could take. I think I'm going to give the edge to one Crystal Dunn. I like it. You could play her anywhere in the back line, but if you have a defensive midfield of Dunn and Coffee, have fun with that uh, opposing attackers. I would also say, in a pinch, you could play Dunn at forward if somebody gets hurt. Like, I mean, she could play, you could literally put her in almost anywhere on the field, and I think you're in good shape. I, well, yeah, no, no spoilies. I, you could probably guess the other uh, player I had in mind there, but uh, I'm going to take done. So we've got our first 10 with the 11th pick in the ITC USWNT Olympic roster fantasy team draft. I am taking Sophia Smith. Got to. I think her World Cup left a lot to be desired. I think even in the Gold Cup, she kind of struggled finding her footing. I think the key to her success has been giving herself a little bit of room to run. Yeah. Not trying to take on more than she can handle. Just like, oh, I've got a one-on-one here. Or I think I can split these two. And I think that's really, really, really helped her game. We've seen her do it in the NWSL. And now it's starting to kind of click within this USWNT 
sort of framework. Yeah, full cosign. I think I may have earlier hit you with the fake out when I took Kat Macario over Sophie Smith. I knew Sophie Smith is in the squad, never an ounce of disrespect to her. Like, and, you know, with Macario coming off her injury, working her way back in, those two are going to spell each other anyway. And with Sophie Smith, she can spell Rodman when you need her to. She can spell Mal Swanson when you need her to. Versatile, great player with experience. You already know what time it is with her. So yeah, she's a no doubter. Awesome. Who are you going with the 12? You know, people can call me out for bias here. She's been one of my favorite players since 2019. I'll add the caveat if healthy, but give me Rose Lavelle. Let's go. You you have to. She's too good. <laughs> she's too good, bro. She has to be on the team. She was my uh, Mel Kuyper's next best available. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> so now I get go. to circle, circle Rose Lavelle on my list too. I agree with you. Still just 28 years old and just yeah. an absolute fucking legend. You know, I, I think we can count on her health-wise to be able to kind of like bounce back. We're obviously at the very, very front end of the NWSL season. Yep. No sense. And like obviously that roster at Gotham is like pretty loaded. You don't need to you know put that much stress on a player like that. But I think come Olympics, when the lights are on, and like now the stakes mm-hmm. are like cranked all the way up. That is a player got to be on this roster if she's healthy. You saw it in the World Cup when shit wasn't working and she was very obviously battling some health issues. Me and you talked about it in our old uh, gambling podcast. She looked like the best player on the field through stretches. It was her and Haran who who looked like they were carrying us. And as me watching her as a Seattle Rain observer, the game is different when she is in and when she's on the ball. You have to put her on the roster. Hundred percent total cosign. I'm gonna make a pick here to kind of firm up our defense. Give me Tierna Davidson. Let's go. Um, I think she's been pretty solid, kind of all the way through. She didn't have the best couple matches in she believes cup, but Gold Cup, I think, rock solid there. She's just a really good player, really smart player, and a player that ultimately I trust. So that's huge, obviously, in a tournament like this. Such a great way to put it. I think Kilgore has obviously shown trust and. You know, not like Kilgore is being like puppeteered by Emma Hayes, but you know Emma Hayes has input. You know the whole staff is kind of aligned on this. I think it's very clear that they trust her as well. And a great partner with Naomi Gurma. They they clearly Mm -hmm. have a level of chemistry back there that you got to like. Totally in support of that pick. Three more spots. Okay, so I got three more players on my big board. Um, I think, again, I'm going to lean into the versatility. I'm going to lean into the experience. Give me Emily Sonnet because you could play her at midfield if you need to, and you could play her at defender if you need to. I like it. She was in my 16 as well. I just love her toughness. I think yeah. she, when she wants to make it hard on you, she's going to do that. She and I does. think kind of seeing her share some minutes with Sam Coffey, those are just <laughs> two players out there that, again, like if they want, if they want to squeeze you, they, they can squeeze you. And I think that's going to be so crucial come Olympics time. All right. I love the pick. Emily Sonnet. Got to have her. Mm. Now, I, I, I've been going defender with most of these. I like our attackers at this point. I got to do it, man. Yes. Give me the supernova. 16-year-old Lily Johannes. Yes. She's in my 16 too. The, the future <laughs> of this U.S. Women's National Team. Uh, she's going to have some familiarity with some of those big European players from her time playing Champions League. I think it's the time is coming very, very soon where now it's going to be time to unleash her. Plus, you know, obviously she's not officially, I don't Mm -hmm. even want to say the words, but I think she's got to be on the roster. I think she's the most exciting young player. If we look at that class that's behind Jaden Shaw, it's even hard to think about that, but um, she's the most exciting young um, under 19 player I think we have in our system. Got to get her onto this roster. God damn it. I love this pick. And man, I love this pick. And I didn't even consider, it's such a great point by you, I didn't even consider her familiarity with the European competition. That is, that's excellent. That, a level of short-sightedness by me, you know, again, I always admit to caveman brain, like looking at athletics or, or football in general is just like, oh, who's the big, strong, fast, smart player? I want that one. And like, you know, we'll figure it out later. But yeah, the experience, that's, that's perfect. And somebody you can trust at 16. Yeah. And I think, you know, she's not like a 16 year old that's playing in some like private school in LA or, you know, like, or, or Jersey, like she's playing in the fucking champions league and she's IX is maybe their best player for long stretches, their best player. Sure. This is a player that went head to head with PSG with Roma 
with Bayern Munich. Now, you know, you've got Germany, you've got France, you've got Spain. And this is a player with real professional football experience. It's not just that she's the future. I think in the here and now, she can make a huge impact. Yeah. I mean, imagine looking at Lily Ioannis and be like, hey, are you going to be able to handle this? And then she looks back at you and says, (laughs) I played against Valentina Giacinti. Do you think I can handle this? I probably can. Yeah. So I I like the I, – I mean, I just couldn't love this pick anymore. I mean, she got some Saki Kumagai head-to-head. She got I'm some saying. Aaron Cuthbert head-to-head. I mean, she's she's fucking ready. 100%. No doubt. We've got one more spot, and um, I'm going to lose my shit if we have the same 16th player, but something's telling me that we might. Who, who is it? Hmm. Okay. Now, see, now I feel like there's a there's a, a, a tad bit of pressure on me. I want to talk this out a little bit. Okay. I'm in between two defenders, and so – in the spirit, because I hate I hate leaving off the player I actually had in my original sixteen. But as I've been looking at it, like one of my like first couple out, I have another player there. So I'm gonna skew young. You took Johannes. Give me Eva Gatino. Ooh, buddy. She plays for PSG. She's getting some Champions League time. I know she hasn't played a lot of minutes for a long time. She's playing in big matches in the Champions League. If we're gonna take the last two spots. You take 16-year-old Johannes, you take 21-year-old Gatino. I feel like you get some some young players in there. I wouldn't be totally surprised if the other player that I had in mind in defense is the total opposite end of the spectrum, who I was really, really considering. But uh, I don't want to spoil it. Who who did you have in mind? I actually had Abby Dalkemper in this spot. Okay. You know, 86 appearances for the U.S. I yep. think another player that's like pretty dependable, pretty steady. Yeah. I mean, in that spot, essentially like a reserve defender, you're really just looking for somebody that's going to kind of hold it down, you know, maybe take over the last third or quarter of a game. And I think she's playing really well. Very workmanlike, clock in, clock out, just kind of doing what what needs to get done. I love when defenders, you know, it's kind of like offensive linemen in football. Like when you don't hear them being called out, it's kind of like a good day. (laughs) Um, And I think on the other side, where you've got nice swanger and done like that's kind of where our offense is flowing it's up that left hand side sure so everything kind of happening on the right is like yeah hold it down back here it's like we're we're sort of tilting the field in this direction so that was that would have been my pick dow kemper but i love the gatino pick i think it's very uh very inspired well all right well let me let me hit you with this though because that's actually not the other the player that i had in mind even though i like where your head's at here so what if we were between gatino dow kemper and I was thinking Casey Kruger, thinking about the other side of the spectrum there. Somebody who you could play, you could honestly play her at left or center back. I mean, you could play her at right back if you really needed to. 33 years old, 46 caps. She was really solid in the CONCACAF W Gold Cup. I think a lot of the same things you you mentioned about Dahl Camper, but she's three years older and uh, with 40 fewer caps than Dahl Camper. I feel like we can't really lose. I mean, and you think about it, we left some good players off this roster. I'm sure we'll talk about, but yeah. I can be swayed. I, I like the youth of Gatino, but I think I, the more I talk about it, Kruger or Dahl Kemper, you could do a lot with either of those players. All right. Well, I made my pick. You know, I, I told you who I had at 16. <laughs> this is your pick. I'm not going to, you know, like I'm going to leave it in your hands where we go. I don't think there's a wrong answer in the bunch. You know, obviously, Trade-offs is the name of the game, you know, when you have a roster like this. Kruger, I mean, you know, I think we've seen her play really, really well recently. Yeah. But it has been in a reserve role. Sure. So that could be a double-edged sword. If, God forbid, there's an injury, something wild happens. You know, is Casey Kruger the player that you want to kind of like have to eat up all those minutes? But on the flip side, she might be the perfect, you know, sort of like, come on. I I know she saved a goal when she kind of like um, took Crystal Dunn's spot. I think that was against Canada. In the Gold yep. Cup, like, I might I might be missing that, but she looked electric coming onto the field for that last 10, 15 minute stretch. So I, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it up to you. We'll, we'll kind of put balls in your court who we pick, and then your last pick will kind of nail down our, our final sixteen. This is a pro Perry Zanjaman podcast. Let's go with Catino. I love the Champions League experience. And now you got me a little bit swayed with the whole she has your experience playing against these great European players. So let's go. She's She's been on the pitch with them. So uh, let's get her out there. And if we need her, you know, she might be able to head in a goal too. Yeah, she's going to know some of the spots to eat, 
get some croissants, get some you know, <laughs> lattes, and you know, she's going to know her way around the town. So, I mean, uh, she's, yeah. not, she's not your regular 21-year-old. Love it. I love our roster. I think we're fucking ready to go. A couple quick notes. You mentioned it. Some names that didn't make the Into the Channel cut. Alex Morgan. Yeah. Mm. On the bubble. I think, um, yeah. I think we can live with that. She played really well in the Gold Cup, obviously a bigger roster, but there's just something about her game. And then again, we're really talking about what's it going to look like against Spain? What's it going to look like against France, Germany? You know, like, and I think when when you kind of crank it up to that level, you've seen her kind of get neutralized a little bit sure. when, you know, she's sort of out there and having to carry a lot of weight as, you know, the number nine. I'm kind of ready for this post uh, Alex Morgan on the biggest stages. I think she's got a huge role to play, obviously, on the team and kind of like, you know, doing what she did. And I thought she was solid, too. You know, and, the, oh, and she yeah. believes um, very valuable player, but tough cuts. I mean, this is, this is not not fun. I'm glad we don't actually have to do this for a living. We could just do it on our fun podcast. <laughs> <laughs> but if somebody were to offer us uh, to do it for a living, hit, hit your boys up. I mean, look, we, we can we can start playing uh, football manager, the video game, start kind of figuring out the roster building skills. Uh, you obviously saw we have a good process here. Um, yeah, totally agree with you on Morgan. Uh, 223 caps, 123 goals, 53 assists. She's one of the greatest players in the history of the program. Mm-hmm. No disrespect ever to the legend Alex Morgan. Lindsey Horan gets the trophy for the She Believes Cup. The first person she hands it to is Alex Morgan. Like the the respect and just the almost it's like you can feel that players are honored to share the field with her. She's an absolute legend. She is the definition of a player and you know, in a similar vein to Megan Rapino, who is going to leave the game and leave the program in a better place than where she found it. And so much respect to her. And I think that if you asked her in the most honest of honest moments, she would say let the young guns get out there and start winning some trophies. Yeah. And I think, you know, the time has to come for the baton to kind of get passed to like yeah. a Lindsay Horan, right? Like, you know, and I think we've already pseudo seen it, but I think she's got to be the big dog, you know, on the bus, the, the captain in every sense. Um, and I think Alex Morgan kind of moving on eh, sort of frees that up a little bit, you know, even when we had that sure. the post. Corbin Albert press conference, another player that, you know, I think is playing really well, didn't make our cut. Right. You still see like Haran and Morgan on the podium together, kind of like making that statement kind of feels like it needs to be Haran speaking on behalf of the whole squad, speaking to the squad, you know, when shit gets tight, which we've already seen. But I don't know, there's just something about it that I think is important. Yeah, it's easier to do it when the other legend isn't standing over your shoulder, I would imagine. Um, Yeah. Other tough cuts. I mean, we talked about young players. I love Olivia Moultrie's game. She's a great player. She was one that I really just kind of thought about throughout this process. And Lynn Williams, I know she's 30 years old. I know she's a little banged up right now with the thigh injury, but just one of my absolute favorite players. It helps that we get to see like her personality. We saw it in the Netflix documentary and now she co-hosts every once in a while or like every like every other episode or once a week on again, Manchester City Football Club legend Sam Mewis' podcast. So, yeah, tough to leave Lynn Williams off. But like you pointed out, that forward squad that we got on this team, Hmm. let's fucking go. Like, I feel like we can look France and Spain right in the eye and say, okay, game on then. Let's let's play. It's going to be exciting, man. I cannot wait. Coming up, we also broke down the U.S. Women's National Team's back-to-back. Come from behind. Who's got more guts than us? Capital W wins over Japan, over Canada, as we took home this year's She Believes Cup. We're also going to talk a little Euro qualifying as well. And we will celebrate the two African nations that punched their ticket to Paris to compete in this summer's 2024 Olympics. Again, congratulations, Zambia. Congratulations, Nigeria. So like if you liked and subscribe if you enjoy talking a little USWNT with your boys. And, you know, Emma Hayes, this is the tape. Yeah, I mean, you you get game tape on players. You just got some game tape on your boys. Look, we're breaking this down. If you, I'm just saying, we like hosting the podcast. It's good. You, you got a couple open spots on the staff. Uh, hit us up. We'll, we'll be available. And, you know, if, if this wasn't enough, check out the future game tape, as I hope uh, most of you will, and catch us on the next episode of Into the Channel. We will see you guys there. 